Hi, before we go on to talk about uh, some more simple classifier methods, we need to talk about overfitting. Any machine learning method may overfit the training data. That's when it produces a classifier that fits the training data too tightly and doesn't generalize well to independent test data. Do you remember the user classifier that you built at the beginning of class 2, where you built a classifier yourself? Imagine tediously putting a tiny circle around every single training data point. You could build a classifier very laboriously that would be 100% correct on the training data, but probably wouldn't generalize very well to independent test data. That's overfitting. It's a general problem. We're going to illustrate it with one R. So we're going to look at the uh, numeric version of the weather problem where temperature and humidity are numbers and not nominal values. So if you think of how 1R works, when it comes to make a rule on the attribute temperature, it's going to make a complex rule that branches 14 different ways, perhaps, for the 14 different instances in the data set. And each rule is going to have zero errors. It's going to get it exactly right. So it's going to look like if we branch on temperature, we're going to get a rule, a perfect rule, with a total error count of zero. Now, in fact, 1R has got a parameter that limits the complexity of rules. And I'm not going to talk about how it works. It's pretty simple, but it's just a bit distracting and not very important how it works. The point is that the parameter uh, allows you to, uh, uh, to limit the complexity of the rules that are produced by 1R. So let's open the numeric weather data. And uh, we can go to uh, 1R and choose it. There is 1R. And uh, let's just create a rule. So now here, the rule is based on the outlook attribute. This is exactly what happened in the last lesson with the uh, nominal version of the weather data. Let's just remove the outlook attribute and try it again. Outlook. We're going to remove that attribute. And now let's see what happens when we classify with 1R. Well, now it branches on humidity. If humidity is less than 82.5, it's a yes day. If it's greater than 82.5, it's a no day. And that gets 10 out of 14 instances correct. So far, so good. That's using 1R's parameter, or the default setting of 1R's parameter that controls the complexity of the rules it generates. We can go and look at 1R. And remember, you can configure a classifier by clicking on it. And we see that there's a parameter. Where is the parameter? It's called min bucket size, and it's set by 6 to default, which is a good compromise kind of value. I'm going to change that value to 1, and then see what happens. Run 1R again. And now I get a different kind of rule. It's branching many different ways on the temperature attribute. This rule is overfitted to the data set. It's a very accurate rule on the training data, but it won't generalize well to independent test data. Now let's see what happens with a more realistic data set. I'll open diabetes, which is a numeric data set. All the attributes are numeric, and the class is either tested negative or tested positive. Let's run 0R. You get a baseline figure for this data set. Here I get 65% for the baseline, so we really ought to be able to do better than that. Now let's run 1R with default parameter settings. That is a value of 6 for 1R's parameter that controls rule complexity. We get 71%, 71.5%. That's pretty good. We're evaluating using cross-validation. And 1R outperforms the baseline accuracy by quite a bit, 71 versus 65. If we look at the rule, it branches on PLAS, 
this is the plasma glucose concentration. So depending on which of these regions the plasma glucose concentration falls into, then we're going to predict a negative or a positive outcome. That seems like quite a sensible rule. Now let's change 1R's parameter to make it overfit. We'll configure 1R and find the min bucket size parameter and change it to 1. When we run our 1R again, we get 57% accuracy, quite a bit lower than the 0R baseline of 65%. And if you look at the rule, here it is. It's testing, what is it testing? It's testing a different attribute, pedi, which if you look at the comments on the R file, happens to be the diabetes pedigree function, whatever that is. You can see that this attribute has a lot of different values and it looks like we're branching on pretty well every single one. That gives us lousy performance when evaluated by cross-validation, which is what we're doing now. But if you were to evaluate it on the training set, you'd expect to see very good performance. Yes, here we get 87.5% uh, accuracy on the training set, which is very good for this data set. Of course, that figure is completely misleading. The rule is strongly overfitted to the training data set and doesn't generalize well to independent test sets. That's a good example of overfitting. Overfitting is a general phenomenon that plagues all machine learning methods. We've illustrated it by playing around with the parameter of the 1R method, but it happens with all machine learning methods. It's one reason why you should never evaluate on the training set. And it can occur in more general contexts. Now let's suppose you've got a data set and you choose a very large number of machine learning methods, say a million different machine learning methods, and choose the best for your data set using cross-validation. Well, because you've used so many machine learning methods, you can't expect to get the same performance on new test data. You've chosen so many that the one that you've ended up with is going to be overfitted to the data set you're using. It's not sufficient just to use cross-validation and believe the results. In this case, you might divide the data three ways into a training set, a test set, and a validation set choose the method using the train and training and test set. By all means, use your million machine learning methods and choose the best on the training and set test set or the best using cross-validation on a training set, but then leave aside this a separate validation set for use at the end once you've chosen your machine learning method and evaluate it on that to get a much more realistic uh, assessment of how it will perform on independent test data. Overfitting is a really big problem in uh, machine learning. You can read uh, a bit more about uh, 1R and, how, and what this parameter actually does in the course text in section 4.1. And off you go now and do the activity associated with this class. Bye for now.